Hello again for tutorial number two um, in this small series of getting to know next build. Um, in the last episode, in the introduction, we wrote some code that can display the word hello using a layer two bitmap font. And that's where we left off and we're going to continue using that source code um, and get a sprite up and running. So let's go back to our code. Um, so the theory behind it is first of all we need to load um, some sprites um, that are in our site our next file into ram banks which have some automatically and then we need to move the from the ram banks um, into sprite ram so the first thing we do is instruct um, next build to do a load sd SD bank. Um, now I have prepared um, some sprites. Uh, this has been done in UDG, just a really simple walking sprite. Um, four frames and a standing frame. And then I've saved that out and put that into the data folder, which you can see here player sprite. So we'll load this into a RAM bank. So player sprite. Um, zero address, zero offset, zero whatever that is, um, and we'll put it in bank 34. So now we've got it into a bank, we need to push it into sprite RAM, and I'm going to use init sprite 2, which uh, 0 offset, uh, zero, oh no, number of sprites we're going to send is going to be 64, uh, 0 offset, and it's going to be in bank 34. Okay, so that's the sprites initialized. And we can quickly test this by doing an update sprite at 32 by 32, so not under the border. Um, we can have sprite ID 0, um, first frame, and sprite attributes can be blank. So if I now run this, we should see our little guy, there he is, stood in front of the word hello. Um, so what we can do is um, let's get some global variable set up. So we're going to need an X and a Y for the player. So dim, um, the player's X is um, a 16-bit word because it can go beyond 256 uh, positions. Um, so uh, player X as U integer. Okay, dim. Uh, play y as u byte. Um, we're going to need um, a player direction. Player direction as u byte. And we're also going to need a timer as u byte. Okay. So what we'll do is we can initialize the player x at let's say 100 and the player y can be i don't know 25 okay and then let's put these in with our variables rather than constants okay um we'll probably also need to know what frame we're on And let's make that unique to player. Okay. Player frame. Um, so let's run that. Just make sure things still um, work as we expect. There we go. Our little fella stood there. Word hello. Okay. Good stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do now is move... Um, Move the sprite code into its own subroutine. Um, update player. What's going on there? Something got wrong. Okay. And we also want to wait for the V blank, so wait, retrace number of frames one. And then we can have. Um, read the keyboard info so we'll make a subroutine for read the keyboard uh, 
Um, now we want to leverage a library within um, body roll, and the library will be uh, the keys library, which gives us access to get scan code and multi keys. And what we can do here now is uh, if get scan code equals key p uh, what key p that will be right um, px equal px plus one else if get scan get scan code equals key o the left px equals px minus one and if let's close and neaten that up um so let's run that five running c spec so i should be able to now um, press o and p so my sprites moving left and right awesome um let's animate the player um so if you remember, this was the ID of the sprite, and this is the frame. So we'll change this to frame. And what we want is um, we need to know which direction the player is going in. So player direction equals zero for right and one for left. And then what we can do with that information is we can uh, take the player direction and um, shift it uh, three bits that way, I think. Let's just run that, see if it's correct. And what this will do is uh, hit the mirror flag. There we go, so it flips over. Okay. And now let's animate. So um, if timer equals zero, um, timer equals 30 frame equals frame plus one if frame equals four frame frame equals zero and if uh, else time equals time minus one and if minus one okay that's our timer done uh, let's give that a go so run that c spec okay let's not animate the frame um, let's have a look why would that be timer of time because they time of frame equal to plus one Ah, because it's a um, player frame. I do that because frame's quite a unique word, so um, not a unique word and could be used elsewhere. So best to avoid player frame. Uh, let's run that. See what we got. So we've got our little guy. He's doing a walk, which is good. We can go left and right. And the frames are correctly flipped. It's got quite a slow gait. So change that to 20. Um, now we really only want to um, move once we've kind of updated, don't we? So, I mean, we're always updating the, the player. Um, Maybe what we could do. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a different timer. Call this frame timer. Um, frame timer equals zero. Frame timer back to five. Frame, 
drain this one. Basically, copy this. Okay. I'm going to have this frame timer global and we'll do frame timer, uh, parent timer, parent timer, minus one. Right, let's try that. Oh, so good. So he's not moving. And when we move, it walks. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Um, I suppose we could add in uh, going down a page. So let's do that. Um, same code. Else if uh, get scan code uh, key A shall be down. Um, PY equals PY. This one play direction is a, uh, what did we say? Is a uh, one, two, two, three, four, five, two, three, three for down. And the frame timer animate it. And then, geez, basically boilerplate. Uh, Q, go up. Minus one, uh, direction two. Uh, so that's all our directions done. So uh, let's have a look at that. Okay, so the reason why our fellow's changing colour is because of the direction bit. Um, so what we can do um, before we use that is play direction play direction and we only want um, the first bit so we get the first bit and then shift it let's see what that does There we go. Oh, little guy. Right, okay, I think um, that's enough for today. Um, hope you found this useful and hope you check out the next one.